بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد continue reading from the statement of the author الشيخ محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى في المرتبة الثانية من مراتب الدين from the second stage and level, from the levels of the deen, al-iman, al-iman, sincere faith. When he have read what the author has mentioned, al-iman wa huwa bid'un wa sab'un shu'ba, alaha qawlu la ilaha illa Allah, wa adnaha imatatu al-adha an al-tariq, wa al-hayya'u shu'batu min al-iman. That al-iman that is seventy some odd branches, and the highest of them is the statement, la ilaha illa Allah, and the lowest of them is to remove some harm from the path. And al-hayya'u, and uh, chastity and shyness, it is a branch from al iman. The author he says, Warkanu husitatun, and its pillars are six. Now we discuss this issue here of the pillars of al iman. Warkanu husitatun, and two min abilahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa riyum al akhir, wa qadri khaydihi wa sharri. That the pillars of al iman, they are six. And that is to believe in Allah and His angels, and His books and His messengers, alayhim as-salatu salam And the last day, and to believe in the decree, the good of that and the bad. And then he mentioned the evidence from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we have read this previously. And the discussion now is about arkan al-iman. That the sincere and true faith in al-iman, it has pillars that it stands upon. And the foundation that is based upon. And we have seen some of those realities and that these six pillars, they are the foundation and the fundamentals of Al-Iman. And that is in the heart of a believer. And likewise, this stretches out into the actions of the body parts and the tongue. But the issue here now is about the first pillar and into the sixth of them. And in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth pillar. These six pillars individually. So the first pillar, and it is the foundation. And the rest of the pillars are following, following behind this pillar. This is the most important pillar, and it is the fundamental foundation. And it is to have sincere faith and belief in Allah. To have belief in Allah. And the rest of the pillars of faith, they're following behind this pillar. And in accordance with this pillar. And that which will clarify this issue is uh, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in the last or the in the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah that it is recommended for a believer to read every night before they sleep whenever they go uh, to lie down or to rest in the evening that it's recommended for a believer to recite some cert certain verses of the Quran and likewise certain adhkar from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to ponder over them and to think about the meanings and to benefit from that and to go to sleep upon that remembrance. From that is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ the Messenger وسلم, he believes in that which was revealed to him from his Lord and so do the believers. Then Allah he says, and this is the point of evidence, كُلٌّ كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُولِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُولِ وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا كُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ That all of them, they believe in Allah and in His angels and in His books and in His messengers. And they do not differentiate between any one of the messengers. And they say, we have heard and we have obeyed. And we hear and we obey. Oh Allah, we seek your forgiveness. Or, oh our Lord, forgive us. And to you we are returning. Or, and to you is the return. So the point here is to clarify these pillars. And they are mentioned in this verse, in this manner. Uh, belief, the belief in Allah, in His angels, in His books, and in His messengers. Naam, and likewise, <coughs> in the last day, or and the decree is included in the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. But the point here is to pay attention to the lamair fi hadihi an ayat al that we give concern and pay attention to the pronouns 
and how they all refer back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ All of them believe in Allah وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ and His angels وَكُتُبِهِ and His books وَرُسُلِهِ and uh, His messengers. So the belief in the angels and in the books and in the messengers this is all following behind the belief in Allah. To believe in Allah and to believe in His angels. And to believe in Allah and to believe in His books. And to believe in Allah and to believe in His messengers. And to believe in Allah and the meeting of with Him on the last day. And to believe in Allah and His decree and that He has the ability to do all things. And nothing occurs except with His permission and will. And according to His ultimate knowledge and wisdom. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the foundation and the fundamental uh, principle of faith to believe in Allah. And likewise, the rest of those pillars as well, but they are following behind this belief. And this is the point to be made here. That, that the rest of the pillars as well, they are from the pillars of faith, and there's no faith without establishing, establishing them, but they are following behind this first pillar. And this first pillar, it takes precedence and the right above them. And the right above them. So from here, we discuss the issue of Arimanu Billah. ما معنى الإيمان بالله What does it mean to have faith in Allah? What does it mean to have true, sincere, Islamic belief, correct Iman in Allah? What does that mean? What is being referred to here? What does that require and what does it necessitate? الإيمان بالله The ulama, they have clarified أكرمكم الله جميعا وزادكم من فضله That Adimanu Billah, it is based upon uh, likewise three pillars. And he, the belief in Allah Azza wa Jal also has pillars, and there are three of them. To believe in Allah, the correct and proper belief, there are three pillars that must be established for that belief to be correct. There must be three pillars that are established for that belief to be correct. And that is to believe in His Lordship, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to believe that He is the Creator of all things. And to believe that the command is in His hand, and He is the King, and everything belongs to Him. And to believe that He is the one who has given everything its shape and its form, and He is the one who has brought everything into existence. And He is the one who is providing for His creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone with no partners. And He is the one who is disposing of the affairs of the entire creation, the entire universe, and everything that he has created, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has done that alone with no partners. And no one helped him, and he has no aids, and he has no peers, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in creating the creation, nor in sustaining the creation, nor in providing for the creation, nor does he have any partners in disposing of the affairs of the creation. He needs nothing, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and everything needs him. And his command is the ultimate command, and his knowledge is the ultimate knowledge, and his wisdom like that is the ultimate wisdom. And there is nothing above him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is nothing that can occur in his dominion and in his kingdom except with his permission. There is nothing that can occur in the creation whatsoever except by his will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first pillar to believe in this affair. To believe that Allah, He is the creator and that He is the sustainer and the provider and the giver, the giver of life and the giver of death and that the kingdom and the dominion is in His hand and the creation, it belongs to Him. And the command, it belongs to Him. And the decree, it belongs to Him alone and nothing occurs without His permission. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the one who is disposing of the affairs of His, uh, of his creation. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And He has no partner in that whatsoever. To single Him out in this belief. To single him out in this belief. To single him out in this and this belief. That he is the only one who does these things. And he has no partners or aides with, uh, along with him in this affair. This is with regards to his lordship and to his actions. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second pillar <clears throat> with regards to al-iman billah. Establishing the proper belief in Allah. Because this belief here is not sufficient for the belief in Allah to be correct. And uh, this is because this particular belief that, has, that, that, that we just discussed is actually the same belief 
the, uh, of the mushrikun, they also had this belief. Yani this much of al-iman, they had that. They, they believed that Allah is the creator and the sustainer and the provider. And Allah mentioned about them in his book, وَلَئِنْ سَعَلْتُهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ يَكُلُّنَّ اللَّهِ and if you ask them, and O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you ask them, any the mushrikun, those who fought him and those who uh, those who harmed him and those who kicked him out of his home, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and killed and, and fought his companions and the likes, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, layakulun Allah, then truly no doubt they will say Allah. So this was their belief. This was their belief in Allah. They had this belief, this portion of the belief. But it's not sufficient for the iman to be correct until the other pillars are established likewise. And that's the importance of learning the foundations and the fundamentals. So to believe in the rububi and the lordship of Allah Azza wa Jalla and that He is the only creator and sustainer and provider and that He is the one who is disposing of the affairs alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not sufficient alone. To affirm this and to establish this, 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 pillar, this pillar is part of Al-Iman Billah. But it's not sufficient alone. But it's not sufficient alone. Because those mushrikun, they said the same thing. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he fought them. And the Prophet did not consider them to be Muslims by that creed and that belief that they had. That's because they did not fulfill the other rights of Al-Iman Billah. That's because they did not fulfill the other uh, or establish the other pillars of Al-Iman Billah. And the second pillar... In Al-Imani Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincere, true Al-Iman and faith in Allah Azza wa Jal is to believe in His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to believe that he, he is alone in that likewise and to single Him out in that. And to single Him out uh, for His uh, Al-Asma Al-Husna wa Sifat Al-Ula Subhanahu wa ta'ala To single him out in this belief That he is the one who possesses the most beautiful Names and lofty attributes of perfection No deficiency does he have whatsoever And Allah Azza wa Jal He has mentioned about this in his book And he says وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَ فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا And uh, the most beautiful names belong to Allah Meaning that Allah He has the most beautiful names So call on him by way of them so call on him by way of them. And Allah he says, That you say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, call on Allah or call on Ar-Rahman. Whichever one you call on, then verily he has the most beautiful names. Or the most beautiful names belong to him alone. Meaning Allah is, is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahman is Allah. This is from his beautiful names and attributes. That he is Ar-Rahman, the one who possesses a vast mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala, du rahmatin wasi'ah. But we can call on him by either name, calling on him by Allah or calling on him by Ar-Rahman. And this is from calling on him by his beautiful names and attributes that he has commanded in these verses. That he has commanded in these noble verses, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Azza wa Jalla, he has many beautiful names and attributes. He has many Beautiful names and and lofty attributes of perfection. No deficiency does he have whatsoever. And likewise, <clears throat> this has been clarified in the Quran and in the Sunnah, in many many verses. Likewise, in many, uh, in many narrations, in many narrations. But with regards to the belief in Allah Azza wa Jalla and in His names and in His attributes, then a believer he believes that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He possesses the attributes of magnificence and glory and perfection, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and completion without any deficiency whatsoever. And uh, He affirms the names and the attributes that Allah has affirmed for Himself. And He affirms the names and the attributes that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He has affirmed for Allah azza wa jal, without making any resemblance whatsoever. To the creation and without denying them, or and also without distorting the meanings, and, and also without uh, falsely interpreting the the meanings away from the apparent meaning. So then, uh, this is a very important point to believe in the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His attributes in the manner that He has described Himself in His book, Tabaraka wa Taala, and in the manner that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has described Him. And this will be Bila T 
تكييفا ولا تمثيل ولا تحريفا ولا تحريفا ولا تعطيل to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and his names and attributes that have come in these texts without asking how and without uh, making a resemblance to the creation and without distorting the meaning and also without denying the meaning so the people of the sunnah يثبتون ما أثبته الله عز وجل لنفسه من صفاته وما أثبت له رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم that they affirm what Allah has affirmed for himself likewise what his messenger has affirmed for him صلى الله عليه وسلم but they affirm that without any تشبيه they, they make affirmation without making a resemblance to the creation and uh, also they make a تنزيه and they glorify Allah Azza wa Jal above any imperfection without making ta'qil, without denying his attributes. So many people, they have fallen into these affairs and they have resembled Allah to the creation and this is disbelief. And other people, <coughs> Alhamdulillah. And other people, they have denied the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal and they have uh, distorted the meanings. But the origin of their denial and the origin of the distortion of their meanings is, or of their distortion of the meanings, is because they had made resemblance, they had resembled Allah to the creation. They resembled Allah to the creation. So they flee from it, tashbih. And they flee from that. The first thing they, that comes to their mind whenever the attributes are mentioned is the understanding of those attributes with regards to the creation. And then they say that, and they think that the only way they can understand these attributes is in the manner of the creation. So therefore, they try to glorify and free Allah from that. So they deny those attributes for Allah Azza wa Jalla and say that it's not befitting for Him. And they claim like this. So they, de they wind up not denying the attributes. Or they don't out all outrightfully deny them like this, but they'll distort the meaning. And in reality, whenever they distort the meaning, they actually have denied them. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُطَتَانِ but rather his two hands there are spread out. He spends as he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of the sunnah, they affirm this attribute for Allah because he affirmed it for himself and that he has two hands, tabaraka wa ta'ala. But the way of the people of the sunnah is that they, they affirm these attributes, kama yaliku bi jalalihi wa azmatihi tabaraka wa ta'ala. In a manner befitting his glory and his majesty. And we do not know how and we do not ask how. We affirm them for him in a manner befitting his majesty. As for the how, he did not inform us. All he informed us of is that he has them. So we establish that for them. And uh, the understanding of that statement, basir, That there is nothing like unto him. And he is the all-hearing and all-seeing. So Allah has affirmed for himself that he is all-hearing and all-seeing. But he has also uh, negated from himself any resemblance to the creation. Uh, or that there is anything resembling to him whatsoever. لم يكن له كفوا أحد. سبحانه وتعالى هل تعلم له السمية؟ نعم. So then this is the case. But those people who have distorted that meaning and they have said بريا ده مبسوطتان. They said his two hands أي نعمته أو قوته. Like this, they have some, his two blessings or his two strengths. Like this, that his hand, the hand is referring to strength, or the hand is referring to blessing. This is what they have claimed. So therefore, this is distortion and tahrif uh, of the meaning of that attribute. And in reality, they have denied the hands. So their tashbih has caused them to distort the meaning and make tahrif. And this had led them to ta'til and the denial of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the denial of the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. But as for the way of the people of the sunnah, then they affirm what Allah has affirmed for him from those attributes in a manner befitting His Majesty. And they do not ask how, nor do they try to interpret that in a manner that is not understood from the Arabic language, apparently. And uh, they say that the meaning of these attributes are known, but the how or the reality of how these attributes are with Allah Azza wa Jalla are not known, because the essence of Allah is not known. And in order to understand the sifat or the attributes of something, one must understand the reality of that thing. And no one has seen anything like Allah Azza wa Jalla. No one even has seen Him, tabaraka wa ta'ala, nor anything resembling to Him. So then how could one speak about the sifat of Allah? Wa al-kalamu an al-sifati far'un an al-kalami fi that As the ulama have mentioned, to speak about the attributes is uh, secondary based upon speaking about the essence of Allah Azza wa Jal. So how could one speak about the essence of Allah Azza wa Jal? And we say to him, that does Allah have a that and an essence? And does He have a life? Now, is it like the creation? No, of course not. 
Okay, therefore, likewise, he has hearing and seeing, and he has other attributes that he has affirmed for him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's also not like the creation. It's also not like the creation. Al-Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has mentioned about this. And he has said a, a beautiful statement in principle for our creed and belief and for clarification to be understood. نَسِفُ اللَّهَ بِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ نَفْسَهُ وَبِمَا وَصَفَ بِهِ رَسُولُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ لَا نَتَجَاوَزُ الْقُرْآنَ وَالْحَدِيثِ لَا نَتَجَاوَزُ الْقُرْآنَ وَالْحَدِيثِ That we believe in that which Allah has described Himself with and that which His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has described Him with and we do not go past the Qur'an and the, and the, and the Hadith. We do not go past the, the Qur'an and and the hadith. So this is the summarization of those two principles. And we have discussed this issue in previous classes in this particular work, the issue of the sifat of Allah Azza wa Jalla and Al Imanu Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we summarize. So the first issue is to believe in his rububiyyah and the oneness of his uh, rububiyyah and lordship and that he's the creator of all things and the provider and sustainer of all things and everything is under his command and under his authority and belongs to him. And he is the one who is disposing of the affairs. And likewise, Tabaraka wa ta'ala, he has the beautiful, most lofty and beautiful names and attributes of perfection. No deficiency whatsoever. And these two pillars, they are that which necessitates the third pillar. And the third pillar is that one must believe in the pillar of faith in Allah. Arkan uh, al Imani Billah. That Allah Azza wa Jal, He is one in His Uluhiyah and His right to be worshipped. And He is one in His divinity, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the only one who is worthy of worship. And that everything besides Him is, that is worshipped is worshipped in falsehood. Naam. And Allah, He clarified this in His book and more. That one place, and he has mentioned Subhanahu wa Taala that he has sent all the messengers to clarify this. Now, that he has sent all of the messengers to clarify this. Then, verily, we have sent to every nation a messenger proclaiming to them to worship Allah and stay away from the false gods and to avoid and to leave off the worship of the false gods. And Allah He says, and Allah he has decreed that you, you should not worship anyone except for him. And Allah he says, اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with him whatsoever. And this is known as hadith, excuse me, as ayat al-hukuk, al-ashara. So the, in the first of those, that is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. So because of his rububiyya and his lordship and his authority and power over all things and his ability to do all things and because of his attributes of perfection and that he is alive and he never dies and that his life it has no beginning nor does it have an end. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, al ladhi la yamut, tabaraka wa ta'ala, this is all necessitating that he should be worshipped alone and that he is worthy of worship alone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the pillars of faith in Allah Azza wa Jal to believe uh, al-Iman bi wahdaniyati Allah bi rububiyyatihi wa fi rububiyyatihi wa wahdiyati wa wahdaniyati Allah fi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa sifatihi wa al-Iman bi wahdaniyati Allah fi uluhiyatihi wa ibadatihi ibadatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal with regards to his lordship and to believe in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal with regards to His beautiful names and lofty attributes of perfection, and to believe in the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal with regards to His right to be worshipped alone. These are the pillars of faith in Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. After this, we have Al Asr al Thani, or Rukn al Thani, Wal Imanu bil Malaika. And then after that, Al Imanu bil Kutubi, Wal Rusuli, Wal Yom al Akhiri, Wal Khadri Khairi bi Sharri. And we suffice with that this evening. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم